Brothers, I now welcome to our virtual podium our 71st Grand Consul, Steve Schuyler, for the State of the Fraternity Address. Brothers, thank you for being with us today. I'm pleased to discuss with you today the state of the Sigma Chi Fraternity. There is no better word to describe the difficult times that we currently find ourselves in other than unprecedented. The last time this continent grappled, grappled with the effects of a pandemic in the way that we have since March of 2020 was during 1918 to 1919. World War I was consuming Europe and the Spanish flu virus was killing people by the millions. At that time, Sigma Chi had just installed short of 100 chapters and had initiated about 19,000 men in its almost 65 year history. As you might imagine, the roles of our active chapters were much smaller than they are today as well. Nonetheless, our predecessors faced operational challenges, not unlike that we grapple with today. I strongly feel that the sum of the challenges we have wrestled with these past seven months exceeds anything we have known in our 165 year plus history. We have done much to manage the effects of the pandemic on Sigma Chi. Past Grand Council Mike Ursillo will cover that later today in his report to the Grand Council and later in a special breakout session. I will forego any specifics except to acknowledge the extraordinary work of the group of brothers. Brother Ursillo, you and your task force have the admiration of the entire fraternity. This task force was ably assisted by Brother Dakota Neff, who, is, who among the many hats he has worn for Sigma Chi over the last several months, deserve special recognition. Thanks, Dakota. The effects of the pandemic alone ground the wheels of Sigma Chi to a halt in mid-March. Mid More than 900 of our future brothers across 108 chapters had their initiations put on indefinite pause as we placed the health and safety of them to the forefront. Today, more than 670 of those men across 73 chapters still have yet to be initiated. By April 15th, every campus on which we have a chapter or colony had suspended classes or moved to virtual learning. Alumni chapter events also ceased. Yet, in the face of all this adversity, our active brothers carried on. The story of any success of Sigma Chi has seen, has seen, has cannot be told, cannot be told without telling the story of the resilience, creativity, and commitment of our undergraduate men. And to you, as do the real credit. Summer events were canceled or rescheduled for the first time in our long history. Today's meeting is an evidence of that. For the first time, our flagship leadership and brotherhood opportunity, the Croc Transformational Leaders Workshop was moved to an online format. Team Croc, ably led by brother Jeff Twible, made the incredible pivot in remarkable in a remarkably short time. Indeed, brother Twible showed the dexterity, dexterity of a ballet dancer, an image like me, I'm sure you'd like to get out of your head. Sorry, Jeff. Team Croc could have obviously not have pulled this off if not for the exceptional leadership of our SALI team led by brothers Mike Greenberg and Jim Cogdell. Brother Jeremy Osborne merits special attention as well. Additionally, about 200 of our best and brightest alumni pitched in to facilitate sessions virtually over a two week period for more, for more than 1200 of our undergraduate officers. Feedback from this event has been largely positive, a truly phenomenal achievement. Amidst all of this, our, wo our world has grappled with an ongoing dialogue about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the wake of horrific racial injustices. I think it is no secret that Sigma Chi has been actively addressing this subject for decades now, and I'm proud to say that we have made real progress. Let me tell you a brief story of an example. In 1966, Alpha Omega chapter at Stanford University desired to pledge a black student named Kenny Washington. To spare you the long version, Mr. Washington was prohibited from joining the chapter by the international fraternity because of the color of his skin. The official records will say there was no other reason, that there were other reasons, but we know today that it was just plain racism. That was wrong. We wronged Mr. Washington and we wronged the many men of Alpha Omega who wanted to do the right thing. 54 years later, a young SIG named Aaron Smith has taken it upon himself to locate Mr. Washington, propose to him that we be in, 
that he be initiated under an NSI program and then amazingly has secured his acceptance to that invitation. As time and occasion, <clears throat> excuse me, permits, Mr. Washington will be initiated by our row chapter at Butler University near his home in Indianapolis and then recorded once and for all. And finally, as a member of the Alpha Omega chapter at Stanford. Mr. Washington and Alpha Omega are not the only occasions where this happened. Brothers, we cannot make a better past, but we can make a better future. Right now, I'm making a declaration as your grand consul that if you know a man who like Mr. Washington should have been made a Sigma Chi, but was prohibited, because of the exclusionary practices of our fraternity in place many, many decades ago. I am imploring you to bring them forward for consideration of initiation under our NSI program. And each of you or someone you know, is if you know someone who has turned in their badge because their fraternity was engaging in discriminatory practices, I say these words to you. Brother, history has proved you right. Please come back. We will welcome you with welcome arm, open arms. Righting the wrongs of the past is how we begin. I'm grateful that Mr. Washington ha has the grace and courage to forgive <clears throat> and that young SIGs of today have their interest in carving out a better future. Let's make sure Mr. Washington's story is the only one that we tell. Brothers, we do ourselves a disservice if we do not continuously ask ourselves the hard questions about whether we have done enough. <clears throat> As many of you know, I have tapped brother Teo Simmons to lead a diversity and inclusion commission to do just that. Ask the hard questions. Ultimately, this commission was tasked with reporting to the executive committee by October 1st on their findings and recommendations. They have completed their charge and you will hear from Brother Simmons later today. We, with great appreciate, appreciation to you, Teo, and to the members of the commission, I know this work was challenging on many levels and Sigma Chi is indebted to all of you for your service. <clears throat> the issues of social justice manifest differently everywhere. There is no doubt that our educational institutions serve as one of the epicenters. As a result, over the last several months, we have seen an anti-Greek sentiment set in centered around the notion that fraternities are the center of this problem, conjuring up images of patriarchal society of age-old traditions. Those of, you, uh, those of you who truly know Sigma Chi know that it is anything but that. We know that our fraternity is a place where any man who identifies himself as a value-based leader and commits himself to a principal life, while at the same time seeks to, re to refine himself in the best version he can be, will always be welcome and cared for. We must be better at truly living our values and then demonstrating to the world through our actions that we that we can understand what Sigma Chi stands for. If we do that, I feel strongly we think that we can make even more progress. But in the meantime, we must understand that our undergraduate men are facing real challenges on their campuses this year, while at the same time <clears throat> dealing with a global pandemic and the various mental, <clears throat> emotional, and practical challenges associated with it. With it. These unprecedented times a call for un unprecedented action and incredible organizational leadership. And yet, other examples of Sigma Chi's flexibilities and adaptiveness, I must submit my appreciation to the task force on modification of the ritual chaired by past grand historian, Eric Hansen. The group, that group of brothers who worked on this task force submitted a comprehensive set of modifications to our ritual, which for the most part, has not been substantially modified in more than 100 years. And then on the heels of that work, developed a temporary initiation that invokes the spirit of Sigma Chi in a way that our founders imagined it. This ceremony will allow nearly 700 young men who wait initiation into Sigma Chi to be welcomed into our brotherhood in a meaningful way. It will also ensure that the young men joining our chapters this fall will have a pathway to initiation where public health guidance precludes our ability to conduct our traditional initiation ceremony. This type of ceremony has not been performed in over 150 years, and the men of today will be so fortunate to be, be the first in generations to know it. Brother Hansen and to the members of your task force, thank you. There's much more to acknowledge, but time is short. Let me bullet point the other incredible work. 
the RMF under the leadership of brothers Dennis Santoli and Steve Davidson have done remarkable work to provide temporary relief to our chapter on the to their to our chapters on their insurance bills. The Constantine Housing Initiative, CHI, under the leadership of brothers Dobrolinsky and Fiore, have done marvelous work in assisting more than 40 house corporations and chapters with financial planning and assistance. The Sigma Chi Foundation's Brothers Helping Brothers Fund enabled hundreds of brothers to receive direct financial support during a time when they needed it most. Thank you to brothers Joe Durzo, John Forst, and Ashley Woods. The Sigma Chi Leadership Institute, SCLI, under the leadership of brothers Greenberg and Coggle, has pivoted our living leadership opportunities to make them virtually deployable while continuing the full court press on the pursuit of accreditation. You will hear more, you know, you will hear more about that later today, but let me first publicly congratulate the SCLI, SCLI board on becoming the first Greek affiliated organization to become an officially accredited institution, institute of higher learning. Years from now, when Sigma Chi looks back on how it has grown, I am confident that this initiative will be the watershed moment that enabled Sigma Chi to catapult itself in, into a new definition of what a fraternity can impact and, and on, on the lives that we lead as men. Brothers, I hope this picture you have received today is this. The work of Sigma Chi over the last seven months has been truly extraordinary. An enormous effort of talent, energy, commitment, and persistence from hundreds and hundreds of brothers and people has collectively just demonstrated what leadership and action looks like. The executive committee of our fraternity has spent more time and energy handling these various challenges presented to our fraternity than in any other time in our modern history. Our grand freighters and grand trustees have collectively stepped up their energies at a rate I don't think is matched in recent histories to assist our chapters, brothers, and house corporations. To each of you, brothers, Sigma Chi is indebted. I am indebted. The final chapter to be told is to go back to our active brothers. The challenges they face today are unlike any that a college student has ever faced. The college experience has been forever changed. There is no normalcy for them, no constraints. The world is one of ever evolving daily change. My heart goes out to each one of these 15,000 men and counting as to our chapters. I want you to know that we are here for you and we will help you through whatever comes your way. But it is to you, most of all, for whom I am grateful. Your resilience, optimism, persistence, and commitment to Sigma Chi will stand as a testament for generations to come about the value of Sigma Chi. You are the leaders of the future, and you are the hope for the future. There is no greater symbol than your resilience than to report how fall recruitment has shaped up so far. At the present, we are projecting to be 15% under the average of fall initiates fall initiate intake from the last three years. While at the same, while that doesn't sound great, I truly believe this is a success success story that literally involves thousands of men buckling down to perpetuate Sigma Chi. Brother Church will give you more detail on his report later today. May we, may we only improve on this in the years to come. Brothers of the Grand Council, to each of you and every one of you, thank you for your commitment to Sigma Chi in the many, many ways that you demonstrated. I am proud to be a Sigma Chi and I'm proud to be your 71st Grand Council. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we're indebted to you as well. I, I think I speak for all members of the fraternity when I extend my appreciation to you for the exceptional leadership you've demonstrated during what no doubt has been a biennium filled with unexpected challenges that are rivaled probably by none other in the history of Sigma Chi. Thank you, Steve. 